So here we have, after the attrition phase, we have, uh, with the axis claimed, the five axes, we have uh, inflicted some losses. We have eliminated two Soviet infantry and other three suffered a hit. Now we have five battles available and as you can see I have already marked the five axes we want to attack. The two battles in the middle, those with the white, sorry, with the yellow and the black cylinder, are over. Means that the odds are more than seven to one, and so the result is automatic. It is a five losses to the defender and nothing to the attacker. While the other three are respectively a five to one, a four to one, and a three to one and they will probably need some air support. But the Germans start with the first one. So the Germans decide to resolve this battle first. In these battles we have a, an outstanding 8 to 1, so the Soviets are automatically eliminated Mind that in this case the five hits cannot be taken by the unit because the infantry has already taken one hit so one hit is enough to destroy the infantry and in this case all the excess hits four but one is enough must be taken by the air unit destroying it. After the axis may advance with up to four ground units in the X. I'm keeping the battle marker just as a reminder that we have already attacked here. Mostly the same happens in this X where we have uh, uh, the bonus, we are 14 to 2 so 7 to 1, but we have the armor bonus and the surprise bonus, so this is another over, and the Soviet, the weak Soviet infantry already hit is eliminated. Note that all the excess hits are lost. Now, in the third battle, we want to commit an air unit. So, the 5 to 1 switches to a 7 to 1. So we have to check the combat table, but as you can see, the 7 to 1 is 4 hits to the defender and nothing to the attacker. So this unit is, this tank unit is eliminated as well, and the axis may advance with at least one unit and that's what we are doing advance we advance with the infantry we will say later why then we have we want to resolve this combat and we commit an air unit bringing the three to a five to one and in this case we have to roll a die and we score a two a 5 to 1 with the 2 is 3 losses for the defender and 1 for the attacker. So 3 losses, oh sorry, 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 pardon me. We have, first, we have a mandatory air-to-air -air combat. So both air units roll respectively 2 dice, the Germans, and they hit at 4 plus, but as they have a bonus at 3 for the first turn at 3 plus, while the Soviets roll only one die and they hit just at 5. 
the die roll are simultaneously and uh, as you can see both uh, score hits to the other the axis scored two hits but one hit is enough to eliminate uh, the Soviet air unit however also the Soviets have scored one hit so the axis air unit is flipped to his uh, weaker side to the cadre level so the previously accounted 3 to 1 is now a 4 to 1 because the Soviets don't have air support anymore and the Axis just have a um, a cadre air unit so we roll the die or we could keep the die roll we roll it before which was a 2 if I remember well which means we have two hits each. The defender must take his two hits uh, in the only way available, so on the infantry, which is eliminated, while the Axis has the option to take, uh, for example, one hit on the reserve unit and one hit to the Hungarian rapid core. This will allow just the German 6th Army to, av to advance into Lvov because any unit marked with a disorganized or a disrupted marker cannot move at all, so cannot advance, cannot also advance or retreat. Let's have a look at the last combat. Here the Axis wants to deploy the last air unit, which is in a range of 5, bringing the 4 to 1 to a 6 to 1. We roll a die, mind that there is only a chance that the Axis get a hit, so it, it happens only if we, now we roll a 1. Let's see what happens. We have rolled a 2. A 2 is 4 hit to the defender, but 2 hits are enough in this case, so the defender is eliminated and the Axis may advance with both these units, but for some reasons the Axis prefers to advance with just one. So, now we have completed the combat phase we just have the option or sorry we just have to rebase all air units that have attacked so this unit will rebase here in Dilnius and this unit in a range of five will rebase in Bialystok. The unit that was hit chooses to rebase in the nearly conquered airport of Lvov. What happens now? The blitz phase. <coughs> As you can see, the Germans start the game with both Guderian and Kleist. However, Kleist is not blitzing capable right now because his unit is not at full strength. So the Axis has just Guderian blitzing capable and as you can see there is one bolt. So Guderian can allow to move and attack again himself, the unit stuck it with him, so the 4th army, and any units, including air units, that are adjacent to him. So basically, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 Axis units can move and attack again. And we will ask this unit to move here 
which cost three movement points because the unit is in an enemy zone, enter a clear in an X in an enemy zone, so it is three movement points, and then two movement points, one for leaving an enemy zone and one for entering Riga. So five movement points are spent entering Riga. Then after, what we would like to do is to break these two units. However, mind that these units cannot attack because it's not activated now. So just for simplicity, I'm going to add markers over those units that are unable to blitz. And of course, uh, <laughs> no reason to go on with other markers uh, all over the map. So, as we want to attack these two units, we should find at least two ground units capable to arrive here, and keeping in consideration that this is an organized Soviet infantry in a forested terrain, so it has a defensive value of 4. That means that, uh, of course, I would bring in air support, but to declare a combat, I need at least a one-to-one -one odd before adding air support. Otherwise, I cannot call for an attack. So, an idea could be to send both these units, which are a nine, attacking this unit, and Guderian and the 4th Army, they both move, expanding three movement points, but uh, they have enough here. Leaving a space for this unit, for, thi for this unit to advance and attack from here. Mind that the Axis has the same number of battle markers available, so five, but uh, it is not able to declare five battles. Anyway, the Axis player plays the first battle here and he decides to add combat support. Some of you might have seen that uh, the Soviet air units are not uh, um, interfering with the enemy, and the reason is that in the initial attrition table, when we calculated the respective values, the Soviets had only 26 ground factors, and so they received zero air reaction markers. So that's why the Soviets are not using their air units in the defense phase. So we have a 9 versus a 3, which is a 3 to 1, but we have the surprise, so it is a 4, and the air unit, so it is a 6. We roll a die, and we score a 4, which is 4 hits to the enemy, which is eliminated. In this case, both our units advance into the X. Finally, we commit this unit here, and so we have 14 to 4, this unit is doubled, organized defense. So it is a 3 to 1, which becomes a 6 to 1 because air support and surprise. We roll the die and we score a 2. So it is 4 hits to the enemy and the Soviet infantry is eliminated. Both the units may advance. I could also rebase the plane here, or if uh, I'm a bit shy, I could keep uh, one of my units behind. 
Now I rebase both uh, my air units and so on. Just uh, for you to know, Minsk uh, remains Soviet controlled because the Axis ZOC doesn't, I mean, I mean, I mean not ZOC can extend across a river or into an urban enemy controlled X. So we have finished the blitz phase and the result now is that we have eliminated six Soviet infantry, three Soviet tanks and two air units. But also at the beginning of the Soviet term the Soviet player will mark these units as out of supply because they are unable to trade supply across land and even if the Soviets still control vent spills it is the Axis that controls the Baltic. The very last thing about sea control each body of water we have to is controlled by the player that controls two out of three major ports, those with the blue anchor. So that's why the Baltic Sea is controlled by the Germans, the Axis, and the Black Sea is instead controlled by Batumi and Sevastopol by the Soviets. Hope you have enjoyed these uh, brief sessions and uh, if you have the question, comments, advice or if you want to offer your strategy, write in the comments. And uh, just take in consideration that there are several opens for the axis and this is just uh, one of uh, the many available. So choose your strategy and game on!